Chandranath Salansi, contributing editor to Woodworkers Journal magazine. And when I designed this mid-century style coffee table for our March-April 2015 issue, I gave it some useful features like a glass top and a built-in drawer that glides on modern push-to-open hardware. And I also styled it in such a way that it would not only fit into a vintage 50s interior, but also a contemporary setting like my living room. Now one feature that I did give this table that you won't find in any vintage piece is battery powered built-in LED lighting. The lighting is controlled by a small remote that not only allows you to dim regular white light, but select from a rainbow of single colors or even set special lighting effects that make the LEDs fade or jump from one color to another. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step just how I built LED lighting into my coffee table. But you could use exactly the same process to incorporate these colorful and affordable LED light strips into a cabinet or another piece of furniture. Purchased for less than $25 on Amazon.com, the LED lighting kit I bought included 16 and a half feet of RGB stick-on light strip, a control module with infrared remote sensor and multi-wire connector, a small remote controller, and an AC power adapter from which I cut the adapter plug to use for my battery power scheme. For this project you'll also need a few feet of four strand connector wire, some 20 or 22 gauge electrical wire, a couple of number 10 brass machine screws with nuts and washers, and a double pole single throw electrical switch. And finally, a 12 volt sealed lead acid battery rated for at least two milliamp hours. Here's the wiring diagram I used for the coffee table. Leads from the 12 volt battery connect to brass screw terminals, which are used for recharging the battery. Wires from the terminals then go to the switch, which connects to the LED control box that powers the light strip. The first step in lighting installation is to route a channel in the underside of the table's glass top frame using a 7 16th inch diameter straight bit in a router. To guide the cut, I attach an edge guide that's been fitted with a pair of rounded lobes. The lobes ride on the outer edge of the curved frame and keep the router at a fixed distance from the edge. I set the edge guide so that the cut is spaced about 5 sixteenths of an inch from the inner edge of the frame. I then set the bit's depth so that it cuts a channel that's just a skosh over 1 eighth inch deep. Now I route a channel around the entire top frame, making sure to keep the edge guide's lobes in firm contact with the frame's edge. After sanding the bottom of the frame smooth, I apply a coat of Danish oil and let it dry. I now insert a length of four conductor electrical wire into an eighth inch groove I cut into the top inside edge of one of the table legs and press it into place using a popsicle stick. To conceal the wire, I fill the groove by gluing in a thin piece of wood cut to match the curve of the leg. Next, it's time to drill two 3 16 inch holes in the bottom of the drawer box for the brass screw charging terminals, as well as a single half inch hole for the switch. The brass terminals are now installed on the box bottom, each fitted with an extra nut set about an eighth inch from the head of the screw. This extends the screw head out a little to make it easier to clip on the leads from the electrical charger.
After securing the switch in its mounting hole, I label its on and off positions with a marker pen, as well as labeling the negative and positive screw terminals. The sealed lead-acid battery can now be set into its shallow housing and the wiring connected from the screw terminals to the switch. I mount the control box just above the battery to keep it from lifting from the housing. Then I connect the battery wires and plug the power connector into the control box. Finally, I attach the multi-wire lead coming from the slot in the leg to the control box. When it's time to glue on the top of the drawer box, I press the infrared remote sensor up through a quarter inch hole drilled near the corner of the top, located so that it will clear the molding that will be mounted around the edge of the top. Next, it's time to fit the LED light strip into the channel around the bottom of the top. The strip must be cut into four segments, which are then wired together at the corners where they meet. Once a segment's length is determined, it must be cut only where the four copper solder pads are in a row, which occurs every few inches along the strip. When you're ready to attach an LED strip, first peel away the backing paper that covers the pressure-sensitive adhesive on the underside of the strip, and carefully press the strip into the channel. Once the segment is in place, go back over the strip, applying firm finger pressure to make sure that the adhesive forms a good bond with the wood. Once all the strips are mounted, I use a fine tip soldering iron to apply just a bit of solder to each of the copper pads at the ends of the strips. Now comes the most tedious part of the entire process, wiring together the four separate light strips, as each connection requires four wires, one for each RGB color plus a ground wire. Start by bending the wire to fit between the strips, then cut it to length and strip a short bit of insulation from both ends. Now tin the ends of the wire by applying just a touch of solder to each. After positioning and securing one end of the wire over its corresponding pad, solder it in place. Once the solder cools, bend the wire around and solder the other end to its pad. Repeat the process for all four wires at each corner, except the one where the multi-strand wire running up the leg will connect. To prevent an electrical short, use a sharp pointed tool to scrape any stray solder from between the wires around the copper pads. To make it easier to tie in the wires coming from the leg, I stripped a short section in the middle of each connecting wire at that corner. The leg wires are connected and soldered after the table is assembled and finished. To recharge the battery using a regular auto battery charger, first flip the switch that disconnects power from the LED control box, then attach the charger's leads to the screw terminals, making sure their polarity is correct. Make sure to set the charger to its lowest amperage setting, preferably 2 amps or less. Then plug the charger in and leave it on until it indicates that charging is complete. Once fully charged, the battery in my coffee table will run the light strip for several hours, or even longer if the LEDs are dimmed.